So we, we passed that this year. The legislature passed it nearly unanimously. So no more views are losing uh, in these water appropriated areas. Now we've got to put that into action where you know people need to work together to reduce their demands uh, in the water supply. And what is not a better year to practice, I guess, than this one. Uh, it's, it's really been tough. That, that effort has started and it, we're moving in a major way that way. How do we get the homeowner in the urban area to pay attention to some of that? Those, those initiatives that are more focused in the agriculture community. You know, I, I find them very interested in this. I was in Kansas City yesterday and they're watching what's going on with the drought and, and there's a great deal of sympathy for people that, that need water to produce their livelihood. But there also is this tension about they, they want to see the conservation of the water taking place. So they're interested. I just think what we do have to do is we have to show them here's what we're doing to conserve that water and still produce uh, the crops and livestock that we need for a hungry world. It's, it's happening. Ben. Uh, my name is Tracy Streeter. I'm the director of the Kansas Water Office in Topeka. Just recently uh, it was announced by Secretary Vilsack that uh, uh, virtually the whole state is going to be under a disaster declaration and that was prompted by a request from Governor Sam Brownback and so virtually we have all the federal tools available in all 105 counties in Kansas uh, uh, in essence now and so that's really good in, in giving livestock producers and, and uh, farmers um, access to some of the federal programs and, and just recently there have been some other changes, uh, lowering of, uh, of the interest rates on loans and shortening or uh, reducing the the, the payment requirement for emergency hay and grazing on CRP. So we're really pleased to see USDA respond for uh, our Kansas farmers and ranchers. Uh, we're also real, um, very good timing that the, the legislature and the governor uh, uh, spearheaded the effort to get some new water legislation this year in Kansas and particularly the multi-year flex accounts. We think that's gonna be a fantastic tool uh, for coping with drought and helping producers with some flexibility and also give us an opportunity for conservation once uh, weather conditions straight out, straighten out here a bit. Also, we're, you know, later today, we're gonna be in Sheridan County uh, visiting with the Hoxie feeders, but we're also really uh, wanna applaud the efforts of uh, some irrigators in Western Sheridan County that have taken initiative to um, create the first local enhanced management area under the 2012 legislation. Uh, we hope that their uh, enhanced management plan to reduce uh, groundwater pumping in their area and extend the life of the aquifer will be a template for, uh, for other water users to, to use across the Ogallala High Plains aquifer. Uh, we've cut our teeth on a, a lake in Brown County, which is in the extreme northeast corner, uh, Mission Lake for the city of Horton. It was dredged a couple of years ago and we're anticipating uh, another dredging project at Osage City, Kansas. Um, Long-term goals, we'll be looking at some of our larger reservoirs, uh, uh, such as John Redmond Reservoir in Coffee County. Uh, those would be probably an, on our immediate radar screen as far as dredging. Uh, once, the, once the costs become a little bit more uh, competitive uh, and you know, we see the technology advance in Kansas with dredging, I'm sure the prices will probably come down over time. But uh, in the long run, we'll probably see more dredging in our state. Uh, but we'll start with the small reservoirs and, and, and kind of learning the technology and what works best and then uh, eventually apply it to the larger lake. Just need a rain, right? A little less heat. Brad, is that what? Exactly. Can you do stories for me? Is it dry? Yeah. It is. It is dry there. I was there Saturday and it was dry. It was hot too. Uh, wildlife and Parks is good to work with, you know. And they'll give us more permits. Uh, the, the, the issue is that we just can't thin them enough to really make a difference, you know. I've got 160 acres of irrigated corn and just like Troy is saying, you know, I, I'm feeding 50, 75 head of them year round. And if we've, we've taken 12 out of the river bottom where I, where I uh, have the most problems, and it's helped a little, but there's just way too many deer. You know, it's, uh, I, Robin and I talked on a tour. We were on here a while back, and, and they're not opposed to legislation that would require a doe be taken before a buck permit was issued. And so I think maybe we, some of us, might work with legislators to 
to talk about that in, in the, the next session. So it is a real issue for those of us on the river because it, last year it cost me five, six thousand dollars. Questions about the oil field drilling. Um, we've got the western <coughs> third to 40% of the state, much of it's leased uh, now for horizontal drilling. And you had, uh, had, had a couple of Oklahoma companies, there were Sandridge and Chesapeake, uh, starting out, and then Shell bought in, which is big international. I understand Apache's been leasing a fair amount up in this area uh, for horizontal drilling, primarily. Uh, the last numbers I just saw them yesterday, we had 141 horizontal wells either permitted, spudded, or producing. Uh, so we've got you know a fair number of them. Going. Most of that is in deep south central Kansas, right on the Oklahoma border. It started. They're they're doing some exploratory drilling up in this area. Uh, they were doing. Uh, I was talking to the head of Sandridge, and they were going to do a well. I thought it was in Trigo County, actually. North Trigo. Is it what county? Okay, and that's a horizontal. So there, and they want to see how far the field is. It's the old formation that we produced in over a lot of years in Kansas, Mississippi limestone. But we've done an almost all vertical, uh, and that's been our local producer mostly done vertical. These guys are going down a mile and out a mile, uh, and some of the early wells have been been good. So the numbers look good on it. It continues to draw a lot of money in. There's a South Korean company that's now bought some of the lease from Sandridge and is drilling. Uh, I'm told is drilling. I, I, I would have to confirm that uh, for you. Uh, the legislature, uh, and I proposed it, uh, increased the tax on wells over 50 barrels a day. Uh, historically, well, the prior law was if you had a well, a new well, no severance tax for two years. I was looking at this saying, these are a lot of out-of-state companies. They get the flush of these wells are pretty typically you get a flush and then it goes down in several months then to a stable, but there's a pretty good flush that usually comes out of it. Saying, so, you know, let's tax that. So July 1 of this year, now the severance tax goes in on any well over 50 barrels a day. Immediately the severance tax is on. The severance tax, I think, is 8% severance tax. So they're having to pay that immediately on the larger, these are all not all, but most of them are more than 40 to 50 barrels a day. So they're paying the severance tax and paying immediately rather than after the two year of uh, flush. And I'm, I'm hopeful the play develops. Uh, we're getting a lot of guys are getting some pretty good lease payments or have been paid a lot to lease their ground. I have had some of our more local, well, primarily Wichita based oil drillers, some Hayes that have complained that, you know, they've driven the lease price through the roof. Uh, I'm more of an old farm guy, so they're paying me a lot for a lease. I'm happy, uh, not mad. But some of the oil, the lease, the oil producers in our state have complained about that piece of it. Most of the ones in Kansas have not been willing to do horizontal drilling because it's a lot more expensive. That well, they're telling me, it takes about $3 million to get into it, to get it down and out and, and frack because you've got to frack the whole thing. Uh, it's taken a lot. I'm going to try to do a, a statewide telephone town hall meeting with some of these oil companies uh, upcoming months. We did one. I did one in the south central Kansas with the CEO of Sandridge about two months ago. It was good information, and so I'm hopeful we can get some of this information out to people that way so folks can know what's what's going on. But that's that's generally the state of play, and we're watching it very closely. And hopefully it develops, because that, that'd be a lot of income for, for us. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 How are you doing? You're going down this? Yeah. 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 Why is that guy? How are you? Yeah. What, and what impact does ethanol have on it? Because you always, the KLA guys are usually hitting me saying, you know, ethanol is really dragging are really hurting us on the price okay, of grain. Mm -hmm. uh, does that, do you see that on you or what do you, uh, okay. uh, what, which, the, what do you see the impact for there? It, I mean, I, it, it, 
it's a double-edged sword a little bit. I mean, the ethanol has been a great industry for Western Kansas, I think, as far as providing jobs, and, and, and it's provided a new source of revenue for agriculture, I'd say, and we buy a lot of feed. I'll show you that here. We buy the byproducts of the plants. But on the other hand, it's definitely increased the pressure on uh, um, corn prices, and uh, I'd say, that, that, I mean, I think it'd be, you'd be lying to say it didn't have a big effect no, on the price of grain. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it definitely does. And, you know, the mandates involved there can, no doubt it's affected the price of grain upward. I don't think you can argue that any other way. Would you agree with that, Dad? No, yeah. hey, when we moved, when we came here, we were going three bucks a bushel probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I guess the day, and well, seven to eight. Now, and what's so. the big change between now and then, ethanol? So, I mean, I guess as a right. as a farmer, you'd like ethanol for sure. <laughs> as a cattle feeder, it, uh, it depends on the day. Ethanol's been good for us, Governor, because our family invested. Right. It's been good for us. We've been really involved in the plant here at Oakley. <laughs> yeah, my dad got in that plant. Right now. Okay. That's not too good. Well, he, no, when he got it, it paid out in the year. Well, it, it's paid out. But, but now but they're it, talking about closing it down because they're having to bring all their grain in yeah. from Iowa. Iowa. Mm -hmm. Scott, you just plug the distiller's grain, too, don't you hear? Right, we do. We do. I was going to show so you guys you the distiller's grain out here. you back. Right. And, and so we do. So it's like, like I said, a double edged sword. I mean, ethanol's been good to us. Uh, ethanol has increased. It, 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 I mean, in one way or another, ethanol has increased okay. our, price, our cost to operate. We're in a real good farming area here. Uh, uh, we're really and and the farmers are really good to us, except they like money all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't imagine. No, <laughs> why aren't you in a chair? <laughs> you, you'll, you'll give them some corn, won't you? <laughs> well, I think well, I think Scott's been on my farm. There isn't much out there. <laughs> Our, our irrigate looks a little sorrier than that does. So. Right. Well, we are good. That that's something that's right. We were really proud of the area we're in for our farmers. That's something I wanted you to say in there because we really are. I mean, we, I really think these guys have done good things and done modernized their farming practices to do more with less okay. and, and to water grow water. corn. There's dryland corn around here that has opportunity to make some yield. Which how is that possible? It's because it's some good farmers. Yeah, and good dirt. Yeah, and good dirt. And good dirt. Yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. So we're we're really happy to be here where we are. 